as you can see, the social justice warriors are in full control of the White House. Right? They're in full control of American policy, and they seem to be completely happy to sell everything out. It's leftism. is selling everything out to China, which is not a surprise, because obviously it's a communist state. And this is just everywhere now. I mean, I'm sure that everyone watching can see it in their own personal lives, that there is SJW nonsense everywhere. I remember five years ago going, oh, this is going to go straight to the top. This is going to be put into all the schools, into all the businesses. You're going to get this in your daily life. And it is everywhere, and it is trying to radically remake society. And it's got to the point where just the most extreme and fringe views of social justice are being presented as if they are the normal, uh, normal like baseline. Provable this, fact. Provable fact. The centrist position is the most radical left-wing position, right? So this one is the, the first one we'll go through. Uh, a New York public school principal sent a letter to white parents advocating for white abolition. So that's Noel Ignatiev's perspective. Again, a radical, ra I mean, really radical. What? <laughs> like, you know, yeah, what killing white people what do they mean well the, the, his his quote was you know um uh uh traitor being a traitor to whiteness is being loyal to humanity so white people aren't even human in Noel Ignatiev's view right and he wanted to abolish whiteness and so from academia it has got to a New York public school where the principal is now writing to the parents saying they need to abolish uh, white abolition and urging students to become traitors to their race Jesus Christ yeah I mean just change white with black there I have like black traitor in the in the green section. What the hell? I mean, it's just doing? evil. It's just this is just evil stuff, and it's I mean, like in a New York public school, it's like this isn't you know the lofty halls of academia anymore. This isn't like some bizarro think tank in government or something like that. No, no, no. This is your daily life, right? And as you can see here, we've got like the eight white identities. Okay, tell me if you hold any of these, Callum. White supremacist. No. White voyeurism. No. White privilege. No. White benefit. No. White confessional. No. White critical. No. White traitor. Definitely not. White abolitionist. Definitely not. What the hell? Like, why would I do any of these? Yeah. Why would I have any racial view of anything like this? White voyeurism. Wouldn't challenge a white supremacist, desires non-whiteness because it's interesting, pleasurable, seeks to control the consumption and appropriation of non-whiteness, fascination with culture, example, consuming black culture without the burden of blackness. What the fuck? This is just a mistake. America. Is, I'm sorry, Americans. It, it was a good attempt. And you had a really great run for about 300 years, but this has gone too far. But your racial history yeah. intersecting with French ideology is just cancer. <laughs> yeah. Like, look at this. Yeah. As, as Macron rightly pointed out, frankly. Um, but yeah, this, this is insane. And school employees are forced to attend presentations denouncing the white race's paternalism and power hoarding, according to the New York Post. Just, just denounce the white race, please. That's all you have to do. Denounce the white race. That's the public school position, I suppose. That's the public school position in New York. Of course, breastfeeding itself is a form of patriarchy, which we uh, covered... Was it the day before yesterday? But uh, this this has so apparently so it was chest feeding the NHS. Yeah, it was chest feeding. Yes. Well, do. but this is this has actually become a much broader problem. Uh, it's become ethically problematic. So, oh, as awesome. Campus Reform point out, in 2016, academics called breastfeeding ethically problematic because it endorses gender roles. And then in 2021, Brighton and Sussex University hospitals decided to go from breastfeeding to chest feeding. Likewise, Harvard Medical School referred to women as birthing people. In an effort, <laughs> <laughs> we want to just birthing machine. Get it over with. Yeah, just birthing body. Yeah, body of births. Um, in, it, but the the attempt was to in, I d include those who identify as non-binary or transgender. Used to birther, breeders. Just that's what you call them. We are concerned about breastfeeding promotion that praises breastfeeding as the natural way to feed infants. It is the natural way to feed infants. That's international law. But it's not just that. It's just all of mammalian history. Yeah, but also... <laughs> I mean, like, it's just literally the fact that we are mammals. I, I know, but I wanted to... Apart from platypuses. Something we spoke on a, a premium podcast, just a small segment, which is that Nestle got in big trouble because they were advertising powder mm -hmm. to, to mothers and then gave them enough free samples so that the mothers wouldn't produce milk yep. and then charged them for the powder, which bankrupted yep. them. And it was in countries that, you know, rates for child dying of diseases was higher. So they were literally killing kids by selling out these free samples, and they got sued in, in the international courts to the point that even the UN passed a resolution that all UN countries, when advertising powder, have to say breast milk is best. That is part of the advertising standards. I mean, it's also scientifically true. Yeah, but, you know, it's not just the, the scientism. There are a lot of yeah. dead kids that got us to this point. So, When are you going to get that premium podcast up, in fact? When it's done. 
well, make it done. <laughs> it's a really good premium podcast, and it will be up. And if you want to watch our other premium podcasts, which are actually all really good, uh, the the one about the immigration to the UK has had some very, very positive responses. Um, but we've got a load of great premium content on Uh But anyway, the reason, the reason that this is important, of course... Uh, Jessica Martucci of the University of Pennsylvania and Perelman School of Medicine and Anne Barnhill of the John Hopkins University of Gen- uh, General Pediatrics say promoting breastfeeding is natural may be ethically problematic and even more troubling, it may bolster the belief that natural approaches are presumptively healthier. Presumptively. It's only scientifically demonstrable. Uh, the mean, it's re- only legally required as well. And it only just makes common sense. Uh, The researchers find it ethically problematic because, quote, it may support biologically deterministic arguments about the role of men and women in the family. For example, women should be the primary caretakers of children. Wow. There's there's biological essentialism wrapped up in breastfeeding. There's there's biological evidence that women are the primary caregivers to a child. It's it's almost like, and I know this drum roll is a big, big announcement, humans are biological entities. I think I can prove that. I think I can scientifically prove that that's the case. Uh, reinforcing, uh, sorry, referencing the natural in breastfeeding promotion may then inadvertently endorse a controversial set of values about family life and gender roles, which would be ethically inappropriate, they state. Okay, lunatics, I agree. You will find that ethically inappropriate. However, I do find your, your scientific racism and racialization of the society, I find that ethically problematic. We have two... Conv- uh, diverging ethical systems that do not agree on how to run the world and it's got to be a choice between one or the other and i i go for my version not your version sorry uh, there is of course more breastfeeding nonsense uh, australia's top university instructed staff to call fathers the non-birthing parent and mothers the gestational parent as to not offend those who don't identify with gender binaries no you know no i'm i'm all in favor of offending those people at this point i want them to be offended i want them to be like what a breast you're breastfeeding, but I'm excluded from that because I don't have breasts. Yeah, yeah get out. This is a mother's classroom. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing in here? Um, and of course, they want to ditch the term mother and father, obviously. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. I love uh, Douglas Murray's point on this that people who identify as gender neutral or anything like that are just identifying as I want attention. Basically, yeah basically. Uh, They cite a 2019 study that said that heterosexual and woman-focused lactation language can misgender, isolate, and harm trans-masculine parents and heteronormative families. Oh well. This this non-gendered language is particularly important in clinical or abstract academic discussions of childbirth and parenthood, both to recognise the identities of students in the class and to model behaviour of students uh, entering clinical practice, to brainwash them into becoming radical SJWs like ourselves. Uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm happy with them not being like that. Uh, moving on, the next one is people of colour are apparently not welcome in English pubs. Don't know how they came to that conclusion, since the pubs are bloody well closed. Like, who are they surveying yeah. in the pubs? No one is welcome in pubs at the moment by government fiat. It is the law of the land. In fact, in Wales, it was literally illegal to serve alcohol. But we're brown and we're not welcome in pubs. Shut up. Just shut up. Don't even care. I, lo- I love I love this, right? So what, what Metro have done here is interviewed like three people who are not white. And these three people are like, yeah, don't feel welcome in pubs. Is one of those three the author as well? Uh, no, wow. but surprisingly not. But it's like, okay, well, look, here's the thing. If you don't feel welcome there, just don't go. Yeah, just don't go. I don't. I don't feel welcome. There's no no these... black sign on the door. Yeah, yeah no, no. This you... is in your head, mate. Yeah, it's in your head. Yeah, I mean, like I've you know go to pubs and I have never really thought about categorizing the races of the people in there, but it's always been a fairly diverse mix of people, I guess. I mean, it's just who cares, right? I mean, I was just concerned about the, the pubs being open. But, I mean, I bet you feel the same way as I feel when I go to the mother and toddler breastfeeding thing, right? And I'm just sat there with my son, and they're like, well, we can't be exclusive. We can't tell him that breastfeeding is something that biological women do because <laughs> that would probably be a hate crime at this point. And so I'm just sat there smiling and going, yes, I am here to lactate. <laughs> I, love the, I love the idea that your baby's, like, self-aware as well, and you're just looking at him like, go, go on, suck yeah. it. And he's like, the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> But anyway, right? <laughs> but this, this, this is this is what it is. So it's, like, it's literally that Family Guy skit. With it is literally that. 
and you're not allowed to laugh at that anymore because that's transphobic. Oh. Uh, Kevin Devine, who is not his real name, obviously, who is black, good thing they told us, uh, has felt the hostility in pubs many times. When you look at all the flags outside a pub and just see white people inside, it makes you think twice, said the racist. It says you, man. Like, what yeah. is wrong with you? Racism. He's a racist. He, he sees a group of white people with a British flag and says, like, oh God, I'm not welcome there. It's like, okay, but did they say that? No, that's in your head. You said that. You had a presupposition, you had a presumption about these white people that they're bad and hate you because you have bad views on white people. That's where that came from. No one put that in your head. You did this to yourself, right? He's like, pubs are seen as super British, but the Britishness they represent is, uh, is kind of at odds with the kind of Britain I occupy and envisage. Occupy? Yes. He literally describes himself as an occupier in Britain, and he has a different vision of Britain than the vision that the British have. That, that just sounds like an invader who wants to change where he's living. Yeah, it's a colonizer. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's what the British did to what? India, that's what the British did to various other countries, and that's what he's doing to Britain, in his own words. That's his view. I mean, it's only him saying it. So pubs are, take him seriously. Pubs are seen as super British, but the Britishness they represent is kind of at odds with the kind of Britain I occupy and envisage. Envision. Uh, well, too bad, mate. That's too bad. Go somewhere else then and be British there. I'm not interested. I I like pubs. I like. I, I, I used to like pubs anyway before the government closed them all. So, I mean, that kind of aspect of Britishness is gone. But too bad. That's not up for debate. It's not for discussion. The pubs are the pubs and they should be open. My version of pubs is the American bars. Yeah, exactly. Then go to America. Go to America. Sort yeah. of. One time I went outside, I went inside and it was like one of those scenes from a Western flick where the out of towner steps into a saloon and all the patriots stop what they're doing and follow his every move. Even the bartender forgot he was pouring a pint and let it overflow. And then everyone clapped, you bloody liar. No one believes you. No one believes you. But, uh, but yeah, so we'll carry on because we're running out of time because there was so much of this to get through. Uh, apparently uh, 20,000 homophobes have signed a petition over the gay kiss in the Cadbury's cream egg advert and that's the thing that's ridiculous according to the mirror it's not that there was a, a if we can scroll down a bit and get a picture of it it's not that Cadbury's decided that the way they were going to market their cream eggs was have a cream egg between the mouth the lips of two gay men kissing that's not ridiculous that's totally normal how will this help us sell more cream eggs cream we'll get eggs. exactly we'll get to that because <laughs> He might be a Nazi, but he predicted this. Uh, <laughs> but I haven't seen the advert because I don't have a television because, God, why would you want a television at this point? But uh, apparently a real-life couple were sharing a cream egg with their mouths in the advert for the goo from the egg goes everywhere as they, they bite it. That's gross. And I wouldn't want to see that in a heterosexual couple. Would you want to see a heterosexual couple in an advert close up kissing with a cream egg in their mouth? Not really. And the goop going everywhere? Like, that sounds gross. It's just, it's also more ironic when it's two men, obviously. Yeah, yeah. White goop. Yeah. So. But uh, the, the petition, uh, the, apparently, uh, I love this, the advert was praised by the vast majority of viewers, right? They link, <laughs> they, they, link <laughs> they link to another one of their own articles saying people on Twitter were really impressed. The LGBT lobby on Twitter were really oh, impressed right. by this. So yeah, the vast majority of the viewers. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm. Uh, the ones I could find find in my own circle yeah exactly exactly you know get off twitter it doesn't represent reality um but uh, uh thousands have put their name to the petition calling for the advert to be banned as they claim it's offensive to christians it's offensive to good taste no like i'm but an I atheist mean, it's still yeah, offensive yeah exactly it's still <laughs> gross it's cringe. yeah exactly yeah it's cringe it's gross and again i wouldn't want that to be heterosexual couple that's gross what are you doing you know sell me a bloody egg <laughs> but uh, they <laughs> The petition reads, uh, by choosing to feature a same-sex couple, Cadbury's are clearly hoping to cause controversy and escape criticism by claiming any objections must be rooted in homophobia, but members of the LGBT community have also expressed dislike for the campaign, which doubtless they have. Uh, if the couple in question were heterosexual, the advertisement would likely be prohibited given the sexually explicit and graphic nature of the kiss, which is probably true. Well, is that advertising guidelines? Uh, that's the, the opinion of the people who made the petition, but I mean, it's okay. probably true. Yeah. Like is is probably. I'm sure you could find an argument for that in the in the guidelines. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, they're kind. They you know they're they're trying to cause gratuitous offence to members of the Christian community, and uh, most during the most important feast in their calendar, which of course is Easter. And uh, one of them hit back on Instagram saying, "So it's okay when an advert sexualizes a woman to benefit the male gaze and make other women feel inadequate if they do not live up to this beauty standard." What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like that's not what they're saying. What they're saying is. How about you don't have a weird sexy kiss with a cream egg, like, f super close up? Like, it's gross. 
Like, no one wants to see it. And yes, Stone Toss called this. Like, it's unbelievable how much this is true. Like, and for anyone who can't see, it's uh, an advertising executive. It's like, behold, our newest campaign. And it's, uh, it's a it's gay kiss with a burger. And uh, someone asks, are you sure that's this will a, help us? It's a white and a black man kissing as that's well. True, yeah. That's true, yeah. That's true, yeah. The ca- Cadbury's is actually racist. I didn't realize. Good point. Uh, are you sure this will help us sell more burgers? And the advertising executive is like, burgers? And that's exactly the position we're in now. We're not here to sell you a thing. We're here to sell you ideology. Yes. 